In this video, we will discuss how the Federal Reserve can help return the economy back to long-run equilibrium. There are two possible scenarios for when the Federal Reserve would interfere. First, in the event that the economy is in a recession. Our ASAD graph would, would indicate that the short-run equilibrium is to the left of the long-run aggregate supply curve. The Federal Reserve would purchase securities. This would cause the aggregate demand curve to increase and the economy would return to equilibrium through increased spending. The question is, why is, that a, why is that a purchase of securities increases aggregate demand? To understand that, we have to look at our loanable funds market that we discussed earlier in the semester. When the Federal Reserve purchases securities, it is selling dollars to the market. Banks increase the amount of money they have to loan out, this is represented by an increase in the supply of loanable funds. The shift of the supply of loanable funds to the right causes interest rates in the economy to fall. This allows consumers and investors to increase their spending. This happens for two reasons. First, it is cheaper to get loans, so the quantity of investment will increase because firms have access to cheaper funds. Second, for consumers, they are sitting on cash. The reduction in the interest rates reduces the opportunity cost of spending that money. Since the interest that they can earn is lower, they will begin to spend the money causing consumption to increase. Therefore, during recessions, the Federal Reserve purchases securities, increases money in circulation, causes interest rates to fall, therefore consumption and investment will increase. The unemployment rate decreases, but the price level increases and we return to long run equilibrium. On the other hand, an economy in expansion as represented in this graph will require the Fed to reduce the aggregate demand curve. They will do this by taking some money out of circulation. To do that, the Fed sells securities, meaning that it's buying dollars. That causes a decrease in the supply of loanable funds in the loanable funds market. It would cause the supply of loanable funds to shift to the left. Interest rates will increase. Quantity of investment will decrease due to the higher cost of capital. Consumption will fall because the opportunity cost of consuming will increase. Both of these changes will cause the AD curve to shift to the left. The economy once again returns to equilibrium. Price, fa price levels fall in the economy and unemployment increases. So the Federal Reserve can help get the economy back to equilibrium. However, the effectiveness of monetary policy will vary on some dimensions. First, monetary policy can cause unexpected changes to the price level, which we know harms people in long run contracts. Unexpected inflation will harm those with long wage contracts and also banks lending out money. Unexpected deflation will harm borrowers. Second, monetary policy isn't as effective at changing the state of the economy when the reason that the economy is not at equilibrium is due to changes in short and aggregate supply or production. Finally, an important outcome arises from monetary policy, and that is that the trade-off between unemployment and inflation. The Phillips curve shows the relationship between price level and unemployment rates in the economy. We know from the ASAD model, when unemployment decreases, price levels increase in the short run. Therefore, the Fed has to balance these trade-offs in the short run. It cannot decrease unemployment without causing inflation, and it cannot reduce inflation without causing an increase to unemployment. Understanding this trade-off means that at some point, the Fed will prioritize either inflation or unemployment. It cannot do both. So in this video, we talked about expansionary monetary policy. This is the monetary policy the Fed implements when it wants the economy to expand. Meaning it will buy treasuries, selling dollars, increasing the supply of loanable funds, decreasing interest rates, and therefore causing I and C to increase, and the AD curve to shift to the right. Contractionary monetary policy is implemented when the economy is growing faster than it should, and the Fed wants to slow growth. The fear here is growth may lead to an increase in inflation and the government does not want to deal with runaway inflation like some other governments had to deal with around the globe. Too much money in the economy can lead to exponential growth in inflation rates. 
the Fed would be interested in reducing the amount of money in the economy. It does so by selling treasuries, which means it's buying dollars. That causes a reduction in the savings uh, in the loanable funds market, which then causes interest rates to increase. The quantity of investment falls, and so does consumption. AD shifts back to its long-run equilibrium. By reducing the inflation rate, the Fed traded for higher unemployment. So that's the story of monetary policy. Next, we'll move on to understanding fiscal policy. To do that, we have to understand the federal government's revenues and spending. That will be the focus of the next set of videos. Remember, if you have any questions, reach out. Do the problems, they will help with this chapter. See you next class.